In part two of Microscopic Pathology, Dr. Barma and Dr. Bharadwaj talk about specimen inking or painting, as they like to call it on the other side of the pond, and the difference between a specimen margin and a true resection margin. Is how do you believe uh, the role of senior pathologists should be evolving in this aspect to give more attention, especially with regard to clinical relevance of macroscopic examination? Exactly. I think that is the key because we have to remember that we have, when we do things, we are doing things for a purpose. Mm -hmm. So and unless we understand why we are doing things, we can end up wasting a lot of time and other resources. So let's delve deeper into certain specifics of macroscopic pathology. So I would like to ask you your opinion and some questions about specimen painting. So what are your thoughts on this practice of painting or some people call it inking of the specimen and its impact on macroscopic assessment accuracy? If you yeah. could also share examples, that would be great. <laughs> Yes, I think inking is is can be useful in specific. Uh, the 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 main reason is to know where the where the margin is. However, one has to be careful because if you ink a large area of the specimen, you uh, it becomes very difficult then to assess it. So when you're looking for lymph nodes, etc., everything is either black or blue, and you struggle to properly assess the specimen. So so it, uh, so it's worth uh, inking only the area in question. So if you got an area where the tumor is close to the margin, you can ink that area alone. And very often I would even slice the specimen and then ink the area so that in my microscopy, the section which has been submitted for microscopy, it is obvious where the edge of that specimen is. It's also very important for us to appreciate that the, the specimen margin, which is what I report, is not necessarily the same as a resection margin, which is what the surgeon and the patient is interested in. Because if, during surgery, the specimen can get distorted and this distortion can result in what, uh, what appears to be margin positive, not being the true margin. So they can I demonstrate this with yes. an example? Oh yeah, that would be wonderful. Right, uh, here, we have a, a section of a radical prostatectomy specimen. And you can see there is a bit of tissue that seems to be hanging up in the air. Mm -hmm. Clearly it is not hanging up out in the air. It is connected to the main specimen in a different plane of section. Now this is where the, the surgeon's scalpel happened to cut into the specimen. Now in this plane of section, it's very clear that the arrowed area, which has ink, and has tumor reaching it does not represent the true tumor mar margin. It's not the resection margin because the resection margin is up here. But however, if the same specimen had been sliced in a different plane, this flap of tissue would have fallen off and all that I would have seen on my section would be this inner bit where you got the ink and you got the tumor at the ink and I would report that as margin positive. So that would be specimen margin positive, but actually that was not the true resection margin, but there is no way for the pathologist to know whether it is a specimen margin or the resection margin if this flap is not rep represented in the examined plane of section. So in my practice, I would always report it as the specimen margin is negative or the specimen margin is positive as opposed to mentioning saying just, just margin or use the term resection margin in my pathology. Interesting how terminology can also affect patient management.